Hey the folks, I got a new knife for you. Something a little different on the channel. I'm taking a page out of my good friend Joe Bananas channel. Uh, I was kind of digging his white background and I wasn't really too pleased with my last video. I thought that uh, the titanium clashed too much with the dark background so I figure I'll try something a little different for this one. Hopefully it looks good. Hopefully the picture is crisp. I can't really tell from his viewfinder. But I got a nephew, so, and again, credit to my friend Joe Bananas, he's the one that initially introduced me or told me about Best Tech, which prompted me to buy that slip joint, that Gen Z, and I did that video, right? So, funny, I, I, I forgot when I did that video, it wasn't too long ago, I did the video maybe like a week ago, and Best Tech Knives USA contacted me on Instagram saying that, hey, my boss wants to send you a knife and I'm assuming it's Best Tech, right, in China. Uh, which is funny about that because uh, in my, if you look at my video, if you look at my Instagram posts, I don't tag Best Tech on any of them, <laughs> right? I don't believe I hashtag them. I don't think I, I tag their their uh uh, Instagram accounts and I don't even think I mentioned it in my YouTube video so you know what that tells me that tells me that best deck is watching social media they are following the Instagram accounts they're following the YouTube accounts anywhere where there's um, I guess information or reviews about their knives which is smart it's smart because uh, I think they're paying attention to what we're saying and um, Nick from Best Tech Knives USA confirmed that. He says that Best Tech's pretty good with uh, paying attention to what the customers are saying about their knives because they are new to the scene. So, you know, they 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 like to listen to the the information coming in and the reviews and the complaints by, uh, you know, knife nuts like us, uh, what people are suggesting and... So Nick told me that they are listening and they will be making changes, including uh, not to this knife, but to the future run of other knives. Because there's a few things that Nick pointed out that they already are making adjustments on on this, on the knives that they've made uh, in the past, including this one. This one is the Best Tech Knives Predator. This one is a Tonto blade shape with a nice two-tone with, a, with like a bead blast, a fine bead blast, and a satin grind on the top. Beautiful. I, I think one of my favorite blade shapes, of course, is the Tonto. So I definitely like that. Joe. <laughs> so when Joe was talking about Best Tag and he was looking for a budget-friendly uh, uh, EDC, uh, we were checking out the Best Tag on uh, Blade HQ. And uh, this is one of the knives that I suggested because I think it looks pretty damn sexy. Joe does not like Tonto blades because Joe's always thinking about sharpening. So he doesn't, on his wicked edge, apparently he's got to sharpen one side and then he's got to sharpen the other. So right away, Joe it does use his knives, unlike me. He is a big EDC guy and he likes using them. So he right away he's thinking about practical use and, and sharpening. So it turned him off. But I think when he sees the video, he's going to realize how beautiful this knife is. It's really sexy lots of videos on this already i'm not gonna do i don't think i'm i don't want to repeat what everyone's done but uh i'll just do i'm gonna do like the good and the bad about this knife there's a lot of good and there's a little bad and again that's being addressed already by best tech according to nick from best tech knives usa so we'll go over that just a little specs on it overall length is 8.38 uh, the handle length is f like under five inches. The blade length is 3.63. And again, it's um, it's a frame lock with all the amenities, right? Over travel, steel insert. Uh, the steel is S35VN, as with most production knives. It is a flipper. All right. Weight is about 4.0 ounces. And now we're going to talk about the good and the bad, okay? I'm going to jump right into it. So, um, what do you guys want to do? The good first or the bad? Let's see. <laughs> Let's do the good first. Let's do the good. So, the good is it is a gorgeous, sexy 
knife design. I, I dig it. It is a large knife, all right, medium sized hands. So it is a very, you know, a fairly large knife, right? Almost nine inches. So very tactical in design, very sexy, very aggressive looking, very intimidating looking, and at the same time, very beautiful aesthetically. Uh, the handles are titanium, and again, it's a frame lock. And it's got this beautiful inlay of carbon fiber, which is really well done. Now, I'm gonna, I, di I didn't take it apart, I'm just gonna guess. Uh, I like how clean the inlay is because there's no screws. Somebody just commented on my uh, Ultramar vid that they complained that the inlay on the uh, micarta was ruined because it had like three screws on it. So I'm going to guess that Best Tech, again, is paying attention to what people are griping about. So they did their best to not to minimize the screws. And I believe, now I'm just guessing... I watched some videos. I don't think anyone's taking this down yet. I was going to take it down. Maybe I'll take it down in the future. I doubt it. I'm kind of lazy. But I'm going to guess that this screw and this pivot screw is anchoring the carbon fiber. Because I look on the other side and I didn't see any screws on the other side. So that's what I'm guessing. Uh, maybe they glued it. I don't know. But if I'm taking a guess, I'm thinking that this and this are anchoring it somehow but then again how would it not pop out I don't know guys I'm just guessing but anyway it's clean it looks pretty decent this one this this particular uh, model is uh, this particular knife has a light uh, purple bluish anna on it right so again very nice chamfered nicely all over the place no sharp edges love that love that that's one of my pet peeves uh, when I get a knife that I hate it when it's not finished, um, that it's got sharp edges. This is this has a little bit of a sharp edge, so. But other than that, everything else is chamfered. Small too. It's like a, a thin chamfering all the way around. All right. Now this is an inlay of uh, carbon fiber on both sides, so they do. You can see there how thick. The carbon fiber is so that takes away some of the titanium so it lightens it up right and then on the inside hopefully you guys can see it uh, yeah there you go on the inside they also milled out the titanium you know to lighten up the the tie even more so generous amount of titanium milled out on the inside on both sides I don't know if you can see it on this one the lighting's not, there you go all right, so nice, you know, for a large knife, 4.0 ounces, I think. It's pretty light for the size. Um, buttery smooth, let's see. It's on bearings, look at this thing. That's sick. Some people harp on that. I love that. I care about that. I am impressed when a knife has that great an action, right? Flip or tap flips nicely, and it's just... It just falls on its weight. Very impressive. I showed it to a co-worker today, and she was like, so impressed. She was like, it was like magic. She couldn't believe how buttery, silky smooth it was. All right, so it is on bearings. Um, beautiful flow-through design, right? Very clean. Very clean. Easy to maintain. Got a backspacer. Got a barrel spacer for a lanyard loop. Right, the standoff, this one lone standoff. And if you notice, there's no screws on that. So I'm guessing that's just kind of like, uh, it's not press fit, but it's sitting probably, they milled out part of the tie to accommodate it. And then the bar, the, the, the backspace, backspace is screwed in with these screws over here. So I like that. Clean, right? Leaves the handle intact. Bare minimum in hardware. Pretty good. Can't complain about that. <laughs> and again, it's got the over travel and the steel insert, right? Amazing ergos. Ergos, right? So it's got this one finger groove. Um, the, I think a lot of knife makers struggle in design because they're trying to be unique, right? They want to be innovative, but I like the way Best Tech did this, right? It's got that one finger groove in it to win it. Locked. 
minimal jimping. This jimping is not aggressive at all. But it's enough to kind of like get your purchase in there. And then they got a little kind of like a jimping on this. This is probably just for more aesthetic. It just looks pretty. That's it. Very clean. Very clean. Right. The pivot is uh, and these are one of the things they're gonna change I'll talk about that with the bat so right now it's got this pivot that you can adjust with like a coin and uh, Nick from Best Tech Knives USA said they're gonna adjust that they're gonna go with um, a regular Torx and then I'll talk about the backside of the pivot in a few seconds in a few minutes very nice uh, pocket clip gorgeous right very nice. It's thin, so gives good retention. It's not super stiff. Looks like it should be doing a good job. It is de deep pocket carry. One screw. Love that. Very nice. All right. That's the good. That's the good in a quick uh, overview. Again, there's tons of videos, folks. So you can check it out. Now, let's do the bad. Let's do the bad. And I think most of the bad I'm going to talk about, they've, they're already going to be addressing in future runs. So uh, one of the things that I noticed that they removed on this particular knife that I have, because I've seen other videos where there was serial numbers on top, which is kind of silly. Um, you know, it's a production knife. Unless you're, I guess if you're making a limited run and it's important to you that you got number 20 or 360 or whatever it is, it's not important to me. To me, I'd rather have it pristine as much as I can, the blade pristine uh, with minimal, minimal uh, logos or any kind of billboarding. That being said, they're not too bad, Best Tech. You can see that the, the, the name Best Tech Knives is there and they got their logo. Pretty minimal already. I think they're changing that. They're doing something. At least they don't have it like on the pocket clip. You know, uh, my only gripe is, yeah, they do have the steel there, right? S35VN. My only gripe is that they put Predator and it is pretty small. It's not, you know, bad. It's not like an eyesore. But my only complaint is that they make this beautiful, gorgeous, sexy knife and then they use some kind of a basic font <laughs> you know they, they, they uh, even this font's a little sexier i think it's got a little uh you know angle to it but this one's just pretty basic kind of it's not big it kind of reminds me a little bit of like when i checked out ontario knife company when they banged out the robert carter knife and then they just put these stupid block letters i said you put all that work to a knife and then you don't pay any attention to uh you know the the font you're using i mean Whatever. But I think uh, Best Tech, uh, they're going to be addressing that. So I don't even know if they're going to put the name on it. But <clears throat> there it is. What else? I do like this Fuller. Um, I do find it very attractive. I think it's kind of unique. Very sexy. It's like a, it tapers off. Um, but what I noticed right away, right out of the box, and I've cleaned it, I've noticed because this full is not all the way through, it does attract a lot of debris inside the crevice, right? I cleaned it off. I should have left a little bit in there, but so I didn't like that, that, that it would just, you know, and you put in your pocket. I'm talking about this was right out of box. So I don't know if they didn't clean it out of best tech, but right out of box, there was a lot of like lint or something over there. So that was no bueno, no bueno. Let's see. The also the blade finish. So right now it's got like this bead blast, right? It's got this bead blast and then the satin. So people were complaining that the bead blast uh, is basically a corrosion magnet, and I'm not sure what this is right here. This that's the way the knife came. See that black spot over there? Hopefully, yeah. So I don't know if that's just dirt or from the the laser, I don't know what it is, but I can't wipe it off. So maybe that's part of the reason why they're chaining bead blast. So they're going to be switching off from bead blast to a satin finish or a tumbled. Uh, I do like the bead blast. It does look good, but apparently 
people were complaining and again like I said best decks paying attention to what people are saying because they don't like it because it's not very corrosion resistant when you're actually using your knife unlike me so they're gonna move away from the bead blast and move on to like a satin or a stone wash like most traditional knives uh, what else the pivot let's talk about the pivot collar so they do have this pivot collar right now I addressed this in my last video Chinese designers now this is not there is no known maker attached to the design of this knife not that I know of anyway but someone designed it but it's not a maker I'm familiar with that being said like I said in the last my last video on the uh, the Junzi for whatever reason the Chinese have a little bit different taste than Americans they go for more color right I said before that when I saw them on the show they had these crazy vibrant green blues and pinks and whatever if that's what you're into some people might like that I don't and they tried to move away from it as best they could but they just couldn't resist it completely so again this is like a purple but then they got this gold pivot collar um, that just doesn't I don't I don't know what do you guys think I just don't think it goes with a knife you know go more monochromatic so that's not being addressed maybe they are maybe after they see this video maybe they will so yeah I wasn't crazy about that that, that's kind of, to me that's kind of like an eyesore all right now I forgot to mention that they do do a nice job contouring the handle excellent right that's a lot of work going on there and you can see that the, the inlay is not flushed now I don't know if that's on purpose I, I think I want to say that's a design choice that they purposely did that to be raised maybe for added grip right but I do love the contouring now that being said they have this pivot collar this yellow pivot collar which I'm gonna assume is steel maybe it's titanium I'm not really sure but it's raised you can see there right it's kind of flushed over here but it still sticks out and it's raised and same thing you see both are raised now same thing when I got the knife there was debris in the under there now I didn't even pocket yet. I can only imagine when you pocket this, all kinds of lint, and, and I, I I don't see the purpose of what I don't really understand what the purpose of that being raised is. I'm not 100 on that. I just maybe because they contoured it here, here, and yeah, I don't. Yeah, maybe that's why it's raised more because it's not raised here. Here it's kind of almost, almost flushed. Maybe it's just uh, they wanted to add it aesthetically it does look I don't know you know what we like guys I mean if it was like maybe some kind of <laughs> moku tie or something maybe would like that maybe they're trying to give us something that high-end knives have so they gave us this gold uh, pivot collar but it's kind of raised very high as you can see so not feeling that too much the other issue with the pivot Apparently, this is a free spinning pivot. The female end is free spinning. Um, so when you, if it's Loctited and you spin this, apparently this spins. Now, I know they've addressed that. Nick uh, from Best Tech Knives USA said that they have addressed that and they're going to be, I'm not sure what they're going to do, <laughs> but they're going to fix it. Either they're going to go with like a D shape. A female pivot or a hexagonal shape something to lock it in place or maybe they're gonna put uh, a torx or something else on that side so you can tighten up on both ends so that seemed to be a point of contention for a lot of guys reviewing it now I haven't taken this down yet and but a good friend of mine Robert Carter told me because he kind of like did that in his earlier models and I, I was having the same issue when I was adjusting it Now he had a Taurus and I was adjusting it and I noticed it was free spinning over here so it was kind of frustrating you know um, some suggestions some of the wieners have told me to get like a rubber glove hold it press it up against here or heat the uh, of course heat the uh, the uh, Loctite or soak it in hot water but whatever but Rob showed me something when I was having issues with this, he said that because it's free spinning, right, that particular early model, he said just get a grip on the blade, right? So you would grip the blade and just clench it and press the blade in. That 
doing that puts pressure on the pivot. And then it didn't make sense to me either. Maybe it does make sense to you if you're a knife maker. But pushing it down, and I noticed when I uh, twisted the torque, I noticed it wasn't spinning on this end. So Rob was genius. When he told me, I was like, that don't make no kind of sense, Rob. But he said, for whatever reason, when you do that, the pressure is on the pivot screw and it won't it won't turn. Um, I'll put it to test if I take this down, but I hope I explained that well. Anyway, you clench it tight and you'll be able to adjust it. And you, you won't have to worry, worry about this thing free spinning. That's from a knife maker. And I've done it. It worked on Rob's knife. I haven't done it on this one. Um, let's go back to a good perfect centering on this beautiful knife. And the blade shape is pretty awesome too. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. It's got this nice swedge with a little bit of a bump there, kind of kind of like a slight harpoon, right? So the pivot, they're gonna adjust. They will definitely be adjusting that on future runs. If they make more of this, I'm sure they're gonna adjust it, but their future knives are gonna have torques and something that won't be free spinning, however they're gonna address it, right? Um, yeah, I think that was really only the bad that I thought about. But what's cool is that I did like that the that Nick from Best Tech Knives USA said that they are paying attention, folks, because they're the new kids on the block. They aim to please. This is a 199, two hundo for a full titanium knife. That's pretty damn sexy. That's pretty good and lightweight. So apparently they're paying attention, folks. I'm gonna do this video. I'm not gonna tag him on it either. <laughs> I won't put their name on the title and let's see if they pay attention let's see if they still watch it they're watching us folks they're paying attention to what you say so uh, if there's anything you that I missed that you guys don't like or do like or disagree with or agree with put it in the comments because they're reading them something that will make future runs with best deck better for us and at a affordable affordable knife too a nice cost cheap 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 on the run so and I just put that video out too that's interesting a couple of days later I get a um, a DM on Instagram so I thought that was that was cool that was kinda cool they are gonna be doing other runs with uh, remember I was saying that they don't really have collaboration with known makers, apparently they have a couple in the works. Um, uh, Elijah Isham is one of the designers that you might know, and they mentioned some other guy named Kumbu. Kumbu, I have no idea who that is, but apparently he's designing a knife. He's doing a collaboration knife with them. Oh, the one thing that Nick uh, told me too, because he's he's best at knives USA on Instagram, and apparently he's their U.S. warranty and media rep. So that's cool. So that was one of the guys that people said, because like if something happens to the knife, who do you contact besides Best Tech, Knive, Best Tech Knives in China? Apparently, they have a U.S. rep here, and that's Best Tech Knives USA. So he's a U.S. US he's a U.S. warranty and rep repair, I would imagine, media rep. So looks like they're getting, checking all the boxes. All right, guys. Hopefully that wasn't too repetitive of other videos I wanted to do something a little different than the previous videos. Uh, let me know if you like the white background. I got other backgrounds. I got gray. I got green, I think. I got black, of course. But uh, All right, guys. Peace.